Hi everyone, welcome back to GA Online Teaching and after a two week break, I uh, hope everyone is refreshed and we are back and we are still busy with grade 9 and grade 8 and I've done my absolute best to cover most topics that will be tested in the examination. Right, today we are going to focus on factorization and factorization happens in three different ways. One is the highest common factor, one is the difference of two squares which we'll do next week and the third one will be factorizing a trinomial. Now we have a few topics left to do till up till the end of the exam or a few weeks left so we'll do our best in order to make sure that all the work is covered. Also note that remember I'm not doing the most difficult of examples I'm just doing the basics so if you get a difficult sum please make sure that you try and break it up and then you see exactly what I'm trying to do. In other words I'm basically just teaching the basics in order to keep my videos as short as possible. Okay, so factorizing highest common factor. Okay, over here two terms, right? Now we all know that factor means when I have two things and I multiply them together, they're going to equal back to my question. In other words, my answer. So if I would take the number six, the factors of six would be uh, three times two or two times three. Now, in this case, it's going to be an algebraic expression multiplied by an algebraic expression, which will give me this over here. What do I mean? Let's go through it. Now, highest common factor, meaning in all of my examples, I'm going to use what is known as the highest common factor. So I have two x squared plus six, now, common means what appears in both of my terms, right? Does x appear in both of my terms? No, so it will not be a common factor. So I just look at my numbers. So what number is divisible by 2 and 6? And it is the highest of that common factor. The obviously, the number would be 2. And this is the one thing. Multiply whatever's in here is going to give me my answer. Now, a very easy method it is take each term divided by my highest common factor and that goes in my bracket. So 2x squared divided by 2, what is left? x squared plus 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. And that is my answer. Two factors, this and this, if I multiply them together, it goes back to my question. Now, I look at number 2 and I look at this long sum over here, meaning that I'm now going to divide thrice. The first thing I need to do is, what is my highest common factor of my numbers, then of my letters? So 5, 10, 20. What number is divisible by all three of those numbers? It would be the number of 5. Now I look at my letters, and the easiest way to distinguish what's my highest common factor, does P appear in all three? Yes, so P will be a common factor, but with what exponent? It will always be the one with the lowest exponent. So that's P to the power of 6, P to the power of 2, P to the power of 4. What's the one with the lowest exponent? The one is 2. What about Q? Does Q appear in all three terms? Yes, I take the one with the lowest exponent and that is p to the power of 1, which you don't need to write down. Right, next thing is, each term divided by my highest common factor. So this over here, divided by this, and if I use my laws of exponents, when I'm dividing, what happens to the exponents? And the bases are the same, they subtract. So 5 divided by 5 is 1, I don't need to write it down. p to the power of 6 divided by p to the power of 2 is p to the power of 4. What about q to the power of 7 divided by q? It would be q to the power of 6 minus. Next term divided by hcf. 10 divided by 5 is 2. Let's go to my p's. p squared divided by p squared, they divide through, so I don't need to write them. Square or Q divided by Q again they divide through and when the answer makes one I don't need to write it down right so the answer would stay negative two next one 20 divided by 5 is 4 P to the power of 4 divided by P squared is P to the power of 2 remember the exponents subtract and Q squared divided by Q 
would be q to the power of 1, which I don't need to write down the exponent. Now, again, this are my two factors. If I multiply them out, they get to my a uh, question. Right. On to example number 3 and 4. Okay, first, remember I'm looking for a common factor, a highest common factor. I have two terms. What separates one term from another? A minus sign or a plus sign. Okay, so what is common in both terms? It would be this whole bracket, so I write the whole bracket. Then, what goes into my next bracket? Basically, whatever is in front of this. What's in front of it? A 3W minus. What's in front of my x plus y over here? The negative Z, and that is my answer. These are my two factors. And that is my answer. Okay, what about over here? Now, do you see this two? They look similar, but they are not the same. I'm going to convert it to be the same. So, 2a squared multiplied by x minus y stays as is. Now, basically what I'm doing over here, I'm multiplying this whole thing by negative 1. And the signs will change. The easiest way to remember is... I'm going to swap this two, and that becomes the same as x minus y. And when I swap that two, I need to swap the sign of the b, and that becomes negative b. Now, question four becomes the same example like question three. What's the highest common factor? It is x minus y. What goes in my next bracket? Whatever's in front of my x minus y, and that is two a squared minus b right so what you're doing over here you basically just multiply by negative one and the signs will all change uh, the easiest way to remember is just make sure that you switch it around and also change the sign in front or in other words my coefficient of x minus y so that was a little bit long but please make sure that you understand this work because a big chunk of paper one grade nine and grade ten is to do with factorization and until next time thank you very much this is ga online teaching